Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Paula and I am the founder of the Lady and Mel Candles. I just got out of the shower and I'll be doing a little bit of a get ready with me. And But in this video, I'll be sharing you guys my tips and tricks on product photography for your candles just using your iPhone. So let's get started. Everything you see on my website is shot by me using my iPhone. As of the moment, I did not hire a, a professional photographer to do my product photography. And 80% or 90% of them are shot from my iPhone. And I do have an SLR. I do have a Fuji film X-T20, but um, it's not something that I always use all the time because I feel like it's just more convenient for me to always work and edit on my iPhone. And this is actually not the iPhone that I'm using. I'm just using this as a mock-up, but this is an iPhone 11 Pro Max. And even with this, guys, you can already get a very high quality photo. I'm gonna charge this a little bit and we'll get started. I'm just trying to finish my makeup routine. I have a lot of things to share. play dress up even if I'm working from home. I just like the feeling and I'm wearing everything. My shirt is from Alo, my shorts is from Alo, and my top is from Zara. This is gonna be my look for today while I'm sharing to you guys my product photography 101. Okay, and I will be also filming in my iPhone 14 Pro Max. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little bit of my office. And I'm doing intermittent fasting because I just want to lose a few pounds. Anyway, here's my office. This is where all the magic happens. Majority of what you see in here came from Ikea, those boards, and this utility desk. As you can see, I have three char pots here, and these are a must. This came from Amazon. All these came from Amazon. You don't really need three char pots, but because I film and I'm a content creator, so I do need majority of them most of the time. For those of you who are starting from vlogging and content creation too, I would highly suggest this Atom Tech. You can also find this on my Amazon link shop that I'll be linking in the description box down below. It's just very convenient for me to take everywhere. It's not that tall. It fits in majority of your bag. And it also comes with a remote that, ha that sticks wherever you go. It is, I believe, 30 inches long and it has an option to rotate too. There we go. And I always like to put a pop socket in here and my iPhone 14 Pro Max fits perfectly snug on this. And you can just always, it's so compact. This is my hand. This tripod is more for when I'm working, when I wanted to film something while I'm working, only because these two tripods have its limitations. It can get into a top view, and this gives me that ability to film on a top view. Now, first up, you're gonna be needing a 22 by 28 inches white paper. This is available at almost all, all your supply stores or art supplies, Office Depot. But specifically this one, I just improvised and got this from Target. The back part is matte and the back part is glossy, which is for those of you who are beginning or starting to do your own product candle photography. Having a white background is almost like a must, I would say because it just gives more focus and highlight to the subject itself without anything else. This, I got this from an art supply. This is a drawing pad, and I like to use a lot of white background. Um, and this does not catch a lot of light, as you can see, as if you're gonna notice. This is the glossy part. Okay, you probably don't see the difference, but the glossy part is much brighter, it's much whiter, and this one is much more cooler, but it wouldn't really matter because all of the photos that we'll be um, taking, we'll be processing it later, and let's get started. 
I'd like you to consider the lighting, the direction of the lighting, the time of the day, especially for those of you who are improvising with natural light and you guys want to spend a little more on, let's say, a fancier setup of lighting, which I don't because my lighting setup is pretty basic. This is what I use sometimes when it's dark and I film and I clip this on my phone. And this is nothing fancy too. This is something that is USB plug. Both of them came from Amazon. And since we're trying to do product photography on a budget just using our mobile phones, then considering natural sunlight is something that you have time, especially depending on how kind of how harsh you want the light to look or how pronounced the shadows you want to look. But in this area, you can see this area that there is some shadow here and it becomes very much pronounced and the post-processing when you start taking more content and you start doing editing. And it will now vary depending on your aesthetic inspiration or your goals and how you want your white space and how you want your product to be the subject and to put a little bit of art in it. It's 2.10 in the afternoon to where I'm at and it's pretty cloudy and it seems like it's going to rain later so there's not a lot of light and but this is the best example that I want to show to you guys how photography and lighting can make a difference. So let me begin when you launch your camera app it automatically directs you to the main camera. And I don't prefer to use the main camera only because I see that there is distortion to the photo. There you go. This is number two. This is number one. On the right photo, you can see the distortion from the top to the bottom, how it is more thicker on the top and slimmer on the bottom. And the telephoto just gives more an accurate dimension of the vessel. Why I prefer the telephoto compared to the main camera. Okay. So I do like to use number two for a lot of reasons because it does not distort the image for me. I like to sometimes make it dramatic and just tap your screen, you can lower the exposure to make it look dramatic and just start shooting from different angles the way you want to. And we can also incorporate a few things like the box. I mean, for photography, you had just have to use your creativity. Um, uh, but I don't prohibit you guys to not use the one for, art for artistic purposes and for variations too, because you'd rather want to have like a lot of selection, different multiple selection. So once you guys are done with your product photography, we'll now head into editing. When it comes to editing, I only use majority two apps on my phone. I use Snapseed and I also use Lightroom. I use Snapseed to correct some of the edges and find details that I don't want in the camera. And when it comes to the Lightroom, it's just majority of what I do when I wanted to adjust some certain lighting, some um, exposure, brightness, contrast, and warmth of the photo. Let's start with this photo number one. I'll be adjusting a little bit of the lightness in here. <clears throat> I'll be adjusting the warm too because I don't want it. I want a temperature a little cooler and I'll definitely adjust the brightness just to balance the color. You can play around guys with how how you want your colors to look like or how brightness and the exposure is to look like so editing can be a matter of preference and you can always play with your imagination as you can see there you go guys the color is much more washed out some of the finer details have been washed out and in this situation if you're satisfied with this type of edit you can and to make the other details more pronounced you can go to color and you can increase the saturation 
but always stay true to the product. And once you're done, you can also refine the edges by sharpening the product. There you go, we'll stick to that. And then we'll save it. Okay. So, now we'll head to Snapseed just because I want to edit some details. And on when it comes to the editing, I think you have to exercise your attention to detail, your detail orientedness. There are a few folds from the paper and I want to get rid of that just by using the healing tool. Can have cleaner edges just by using the cleaning tool if you want to make the tops more finer you can also use this to smoothen the tops and if i want a more professional and a more cleaner look that these apps have because there's also limitation to the algorithm and the programming of these apps, I tend to use Photoshop to just make the candle more appealing and more neater. But you're not bound to just Photoshop. There's other apps out there too that are also good at editing, like Pixart for those of you who are not much into design. There you go. Okay, we can just clean some of that. Oh okay, guys. So if you want to see the before and after, just press the long press and it will show you the before and after. Oops, I think I missed a few. So there is a fold over here. There. Okay. You can also, while editing, you can also use. Hold on. It actually did got worse. <laughs> the before and after this over here and voila there you go before and after all right product photography and editing can be very intimidating it's a little bit intimidating for me too because sometimes i don't trust my own judgment for my own design but product photography you don't necessarily need to hire an expensive photographer, especially for those of you who are starting out. But if you have more budget in the future, yes, you definitely can. The sky is the limit. But for those of you who are crunching your budget and lessening your overhead and your operational expense, and I think these are one of the few easiest hacks and methods to lessen that without breaking the bed, just utilizing and using your iPhone. And I know editing can be intimidating. It doesn't require Snapseed and Lightroom doesn't require a full knowledge of editing and these tools will help you to just edit those minor details and clean up a few things, especially for those of you who will be applying the method that I'm using and using a white background, just regular, not regular and natural lighting. Um, and that can be really helpful. So I hope guys who learned a thing or two in your product photography session with me and editing session with me. And so if you have any comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And also don't forget to follow me on my social media accounts that I'll be flashing here on the screen and I'll be putting in the description box down below too. And have a nice day and goodbye. Please subscribe. Oh, don't forget to give this a thumbs up too. <laughs>